Welcome to the third episode of the ZEP OS introductory video series. By watching this video, you will have a clearer understanding of the side service function of the ZEP OS application. Next, you will join me in understanding the specific usage of the side service API through the fake call application. Before we start, we need to introduce what a fake call is. Fake call can produce realistic calls. Users can edit callers at will on the mobile phone page and can also choose the time of the call, customize the incoming call information, and set the fake call prompt to be displayed regularly on the watch side according to regulations, which is very realistic. From the description just now, we can understand that the fake call involves the information exchange communication between the mobile app and the device, so we need to use the API related to the associated service in the development process. You can have an intuitive understanding of fake calls from the design drawings. Before introducing the code logic and writing the specific code on the app side, it is necessary for us to understand the overall architecture of the ZEP OS application and understand what the side service does. Find the overall architecture on the ZEP OS doc platform. As can be seen from the figure, a complete ZEP OS application is divided into two parts, device app and companion app, optional, here we focus on side service, side service have no UI interface and provide a range of data communication and network request capabilities. Among them, companion application is optional, that is to say, the applet that only runs on the device side does not need to use the companion application. The relationship between them can be understood as communication between the device application and the side service via Bluetooth. Communication between the side service and the app settings via the setting storage API. Both the side service and the app settings can access setting storage storage. The side service listens for change event via setting storage to respond to changes to setting storage data in the app settings. The app settings is naturally responsive, eliminating the need to manually listen for data changes in setting storage. The side service communicates with the server via the fetch API. We can find companion service APIs in the app column and find that there are three types of APIs for us to use. We can click in to see their detailed methods and code examples. For example, the side service uses the ZEP Bluetooth communication capability through the messaging API module to communicate with the device app. The fetch API can be used to send HTTP requests in JS, and the fetch usage in the side service conforms to the specification. The setting storage API can store data persistently in the ZEP app. Entering the fake call application, we can see the classification of the project file. Since the device application and the associated service communicate through Bluetooth, we need to use our Bluetooth communication library, which is placed in the shared folder. The page directory is mainly responsible for the specific logic of each page of the app, such as incoming call page logic, on the phone page logic, selection page logic, and waiting for incoming call page logic. Now let's introduce the logic of the different pages. Choose.js page is mainly responsible for selecting the name of the caller on the device and the time of the call. After the selection is over, the incoming call waiting page will be entered. You can click on the waiting.js page to see the specific logic. One of the core logics is to use a timer to control the page. The init timer function creates a timer. When the countdown to the incoming call is less than zero, stop the timer and jump to the incoming call. Go to the incoming call page. After answering the incoming call page, you will come to the on the phone page. That is, the call.js in the file. Its main function is to display the logic of the call duration, display the caller information, how to hang up the phone, etc. during the call. The above pages are all basic functions of fake calls. Let's focus on how the device and the mobile phone communicate. We open the index.js file, and its main function is to establish Bluetooth and obtain relevant data from the mobile phone after opening the fake call app. You can see that here we use Message Builder, a class in the Bluetooth communication library. We can click in to see what methods or properties are provided. Click in to browse carefully, and you can see that some methods are provided for us. For example, request means to send a request but there will be a monitoring return, and response means to return the current request of the corresponding interface. Call means to monitor the data of the associated server. 
let's go back to the index page just now. We need to establish a Bluetooth connection when the fake call application is just opened, so we need to make a judgment on the Bluetooth link status at the beginning. If we are connecting, then we can then use the message builder dot request method to send a connection request and obtain the data on the mobile phone. After understanding the main functions and logic of each page of fake calls, let's focus on how to write the specific logic of AppSide, that is, the side service page. Before formally writing the code, we need to understand how to register the side service. In the Yee Guides column of the Zeppo Doc platform, find the framework introduction, and then click Side Service to find Register for Side Service. We can see how the side service is registered. The companion service needs to register an instance using the AppSide service constructor and bind the lifecycle callback function. It consists of three parts, on init, on run, and on destroy, which is very similar to the lifecycle of the page. Let's go back to the created AppSide index.js file. Since we need to use the message builder in the Bluetooth communication library, we need to introduce this class at the beginning. At the same time, create an instance of the message builder class. Here we create an instance called message builder. Immediately after that, we need to write the initialization logic. Remember the companion service API provided by the Zep OS platform? We go back to this page and can find the setting storage API. Its role is to persist data stored in the Zep app. When the companion service is initialized, we need to obtain the caller's information from the Zep app of the mobile phone. Here we can define an initialization variable initialized. The purpose is to make a judgment. When it is found that the companion application is not initialized, use the settings.settingStorage.setItem method to create a, a key value pair named caller to store the default caller name obtained from the mobile app. Here we need to write the default information during initialization, and the text information is stored in the common folder. Right at the top. Then use the settings.settingStorage.setItem method to set a variable initialized fake call representing the initialization of false calls as the key name and assign true to it. The role of this step is to pave the way for the judgment just now. We created a variable initialized at the beginning and we need to know whether it is true or false when judging initialization so we can use the settings.settingStorage.getItem method again at the beginning to obtain the key value pair named initialized fake call. If it is not initialized, it is false, then go to the mobile app to get the initial data. After obtaining the default caller name, we need to monitor the storage changes of the data, and we need to use the API to monitor the changes of the data storage. You can find settings.settingStorage.addListener on the Zep OS doc platform. It listens for changes to storage with the agreed event name change and can be used in the side service to listen for changes to data in setting storage by the app settings. Therefore, we can use this method to monitor the data changes of the mobile app. When the data of the mobile app changes, we will notify our device page. Here, we need to use the message builder dot call method to actively notify the page page, indicating that the data has changed. Then, we need to call request to get the data. Use the message builder dot on method to listen to the request on the device side, the agreed time is called request, and the passed parameter CTX represents the text content to be transmitted. Since we need to convert the text from the mobile phone to a JSON string, we need to define a variable JSON RPC and use message builder dot buff to JSON to convert the data in the buffer into JSON data. Then make a judgment, when JSONRPC.method is the event of update, the mobile app will respond by converting the text data into an object and passing it to the corresponding page. In this way, the data transmission is successful. At the end, we can listen to the message builder, and then we can preview it in the emulator.
Next we can preview in the emulator. Enter the Zeus dev command, open the emulator and wait for the installation of the application. Then we can open the settings page to see what it looks like. In fact, what is simulated here is the interface on the ZEP app on the mobile phone, you can add and delete personnel information. Entering the emulator, you can see that the relevant information on the mobile phone has been synchronized to the watch side just now. We can choose the estimated call time by clicking on it at will. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the companion service is invisible, but it is a bridge for data transmission between the device and the mobile phone. Without it, the device and the mobile phone will not be synchronized as shown above. I believe everyone also has a more intuitive understanding of companion services. Thank you for watching the third episode of the Zep OS Developer Introductory Video Series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.